All right, let's jump into it now. David Nelson's chief market strategist at Bellpoint Asset Management. He joins us on this down day for stocks. David, always nice to see you, sir. Thanks for having me. Um, so I guess in, investors have had a chance to digest all this central bank commentary dating back to Friday, and they decided it's a sell everything market. It almost feels to me like market sentiment as as negative as we were seeing, uh, at least in the U.S. Um, I, I want to say in June, which was when we saw the the, the summer lows for the uh, for the broader indices. What's your sense right now? I don't know if it's that bad, but today's kind of cleanup day, maybe follow through from Friday's uh, sell off. Even after the close on Friday, I was here in the office pretty late and the selling continued. And at eight o'clock when everything shuts down, stocks are still headed lower. So the follow through is probably expected. Right now, the bears have the ball. I get that. Uh, the talk was pretty tough. The fear is that uh, the Fed will have to push rates higher than what's indicated in Fed funds futures, which, by the way, don't fully endorse what Jay Powell is saying. Jay said the FOMC is focused on bringing down inflation to 2%. That ain't going to happen, all right? It's too late for that. We missed that window. Today's inflation isn't just too many dollars chasing goods and services. It's also a supply chain challenge. Well, I'm going to jump. That is helpful context. I'm going to jump straight into some investment ideas because we've been talking a lot about the macro this hour, but I know a lot of people are looking for some ideas. And we had a conversation earlier this hour about seeking some dividend plays. You, you have come to the table with a couple of companies um, that um, are in a... Uh, um, an envious position, if you will, when it comes to cash flow generation right now. Let's start with energy, which our audience here in Canada obviously has been watching the Canadian energy stocks closely. Pioneer Natural Resources, PXD on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, whenever I screen on Bloomberg for, you know, names that are uh, focused on dividend, generating a boatload of cash, um, Pioneer's often on that list. What is it about this name that's caught your eye? Yeah, the cash flow is pretty hard to believe. 9% free cash flow yields. And Pioneer is not alone. I guess for me, it's, it's the broad macro backdrop. The administration has been selling, you know, a million barrels a day. And all in will have sold 180 million barrels by the time we get to the election. And yet oil is still holding in. That's going to stop. You know, the, the SPR is going to be at dangerously low levels. We're entering hurricane season. The only way to replenish that is to buy more oil. So I think oil is going to be higher at the end of the year. And a, a, a name like Pioneer plays right into that. OK, and then a name that we don't talk as much about in this country, uh, but it is a really interesting one, T-Mobile U.S., um, which uh, this year, I want to say the stock is up more than 20 percent in a down market. And this is not a dividend play, but this is a company that after the Sprint deal has put itself in a very nice position to be a leader in 5G, to have some pricing power, it seems, because they, they generally don't change their pricing as much. They started a lower base than some of the rivals. And the cash coming in is likely coming back to shareholders, maybe not as a dividend, but as a, as a buyback. Talk to us a little bit more about the T-Mobile story. I think they're going to I think they're going to take market share the switch over to 5G that's been a home run for them they're in the final stages you say of the sprint uh, integration right now there's a performance gap uh, be, with Verizon actually falling behind T-Mobile. It's not coming from me, it's coming from analysts and analytical firms that actually do this for a living. I'm a Verizon customer and have been for 20 years, and I'm thinking about it. And if I'm thinking about it, others are as well. And like you said, it's not, it's not super cheap. You've got to go out to 2023 20, to get it to 21 times earnings. But when you start looking at other metrics like enterprise value to EBITDA, it gets a lot more, more respectable at 10 times. And uh, I guess on that note, uh, I'll come back to you on the on the weakness we're seeing in tech today, because, you know, you have these moments like this and everybody says, OK, no, you got to move away from risk. But if you had um, lived and died by that uh, mantra, um, obviously, you, you probably would have been frustrated having seen the rally that we saw in big tech off the summer lows. Uh, is there a case to be made that just keeping an eye on that sector, even in this uncertain interest rate environment, is, is worthy, considering a lot of these companies are just money machines to begin with? They are, and, and they're very susceptible to, to sell-offs like this because they're, they're obviously also very, very crowded, crowded trades. Uh, but I'm long the space, and you, it's just, you got to do your work now. It's a yeah. lot harder, and you got to really dig down in there. I still believe, despite all this noise that we're seeing around, around the talk from the Federal Reserve, and that's what it is right now, it's talk, uh, is, is that the June lows will hold, all right? I think there are a lot of buyers down there, and uh, I think we're going to need to see something very different than what we know right now to break those lows.